You may not be happy, but you got to go deal with it. Are you in or are you out? If you don't do it, we're done. I'm going to make you do stuff you don't want to do. Woo! Face things you don't want to face. Push! It'll be an experience where life will never be the same again. In over 30 years as an author, strategist, and coach, I work with millions of people who want to achieve their dreams. But now, I'm taking on my toughest challenge yet. You don't sit on the couch while your family's suffering. Helping families in crisis transform their lives. I just want you to be with me. In only 30 days. The price of admission here is if you can't, then you must. to face the most enormous challenge and turn it around. You define what your successes are. Take the hill! Wow. I'm not letting you quit. That's my breakthrough. Thank you! You got it! You got it! I was living the American dream. I had a full-time position, executive chef of a private country club. We had our house, two cars. We had everything. My kids were happy. I had somebody that I loved dearly and somebody that loved me. It was an unbelievable life. Everything was perfect prior to June 29th, 2006. My wife was killed in a drive-by shooting. My wife and my son, Anthony, we were walking hand in hand across the street. Two men were arguing. My wife saw the handgun, pushed my son behind this wall, so he was out of the line of fire, and she fell to the ground, and that was all he, my son remembers. We yeah. had. My mom was shot, and I was there. It's hard. Every day is hard. That day, I remember telling her, I love you, and she said, I love you too, and I kissed her on the top of the head. And that was the last time I saw her. Since my mom was shot randomly, my dad, he like, he, he haven't been the same. My life, you know, was just pulled from me. Lost my job, lost my home, and we all ended up homeless. My dad's hurt. I just want my dad to be better. I want my kids to think of me as a winner, not, you know, not some loser. You know, I want them to think of me as, that's my dad. Let me tell you a little bit about John Rodriguez. He was a man who had huge dreams. He wanted to be an incredible chef, and John found a way to do it. He worked hard, and he convinced people of his passion, and he got a scholarship. He graduated with honors, and he became what he dreamed about, this extraordinary chef. He then married the woman of his dreams, and he had two beautiful boys. John's life couldn't be better until one day when a tragedy beyond anything he could ever imagine happened. John died emotionally and spiritually that day. He lost his will to live. And now, a few years later, he's still living in a shelter with his two boys, trying to figure out how he got here. God is good, God is grace. Let us thank you for our food, bow our heads, and we be prayed. Give our Lord our daily bread. Amen. God Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. My wife, Tanya, was an amazing woman. She was a great mother. She was a giving person and um, kept us together as a family. That's John? That's John. Look at little John. Look at how happy you were. <laughs> That's me, Mama. She was pregnant with Anthony there. It really brings back a lot of emotions. My dad right now, he's really, really depressed. All he does is sleep and sit around. I've been working ever since my mom died. I have to stay strong to keep an example for my little brother. <laughs> Never thought it'd be like this. <laughs> Never thought I'd be homeless. <laughs> I'm a father myself. We all know that inside of us, 
We do almost anything for our kids, but for some reason, John isn't stepping up. His son, John Jr., is 14 years old, and he's trying to figure out how to make money to support the family because his father sleeps till noon. Something's got to happen to change this man's life. These boys need a father. So I'm going to invite them to come to Fiji, to take them on a trip they will never forget. 20 plus years ago, I went there as a young man, and it changed my life to be around these incredibly happy Fijian people. So I built a home and eventually a resort, and now I have a place that I can share where they can rejuvenate. But it's also going to be the beginning of a journey where John is going to be challenged to face the man he needs to become. His journey begins now. Welcome, welcome to Mali. Thank you so much. So nice to meet you, you, John. How was your trip? Great. I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, Anthony. John Jr., how are you doing? You excited to be here? Yeah. This trip to Fiji, this is a lifetime experience. Hopefully, Tony can help me and my family, mostly my dad, and put a smile back on his face. I know there's nothing that can ever shift the fact that you lost the person you love most in your life but she also deserves to be honored by all of you coming together as a family at a different level. I want to get to what's really going on and just kick its butt and turn it around. I understand. And, and, you know, the kind of price of admission here is if you can't, then you must. It's like, if I can't do this, then I must do it. If it's something that is unbelievably difficult, but you know if you do it, you're going to be a better man, a better father, a stronger human being, more alive, but there's no going back once we start this journey. You up for that? I just look at these two. Just show me the way. All right. I'm ready. I was anxious, nervous, but I realized I just got to trust Tony. He has success behind him, and that's what I want. When your wife passed, tell me, what did you experience? It was like my, my life was, was stopped, and my children and I ended up on the streets with a bus pass. I had no way of coping with it, and it was, I had to go back to my first love, which is food. I just sat there and gained 70 pounds. Seeing myself just get larger in the mirror and then just messing with my head, it's just, mm -hmm. it's not a comfortable feeling. And you like comfort a lot, don't you? Yes, I do. The path of comfort, the path of least resistance is the path of pain. That's his problem. He's been too comfortable. So comfortable he hasn't been driven to do anything. Comfort to not have to face your fears. That's why you don't get a job. Comfort to not work out intensely. Am I being fair? Totally. And yet, ironically, the thing that makes you comfortable in the end, the food makes you more uncomfortable long term. The lack of a job makes you more uncomfortable long term. But then it puts you in this crazy mode where, what do you start to feel? I start hating myself. Yeah. Not, not a good father. Ain't fair for him to be the father. No, not at all. Right now, he is. He's the strong one. He's the one working. And I'm not doing this to try to make you feel bad. Um, I'm doing this to try and make you feel bad. OK. Because if we don't feel bad, you don't change. If John doesn't pull himself together and step up, his two boys are going to continue to grow up in shelters. They're being robbed of their childhood. And they've already lost their mom. And if John doesn't get his act together, they're going to lose their father as well. What are you worried about with your dad? You eat a lot, you get, the, um, you get fat, and then you die. Anything else he's doing that worries you? Smoke. Smoke. What's the consequence if we put all that together? It means uh, I won't be around here to take care of my children. And who would? The question's on the table. Are you willing to commit, not try, to a path where smoking is no longer it because you're not going to let your boys live in fear that you're going to die? Yep. Starting when? Today. Now. It, it's hell. It's hell. Which yeah. do you value more, the puff on the cigarette or their respect? Their respect. How do you know you can really stop? Because this is all I have left, and uh, there it is. And they'll have a giant weight off their backs. What I want to do with John is get him to realize we only smoke, we only overeat. There's ways of changing our state. But there's other ways to do it. You can just physically do it by changing what you focus on or change the way you use your body. Turn like this. Why don't you stretch your body? I've been sitting a little while anyway. And I wanted to separate the way he had been from the way he's going to be. Now, I want you to just finish this sentence for me. My soul knows. First thing comes out with all your strength, go. My soul knows that I need this help. My soul, My soul knows. knows that I can do this thing. My soul knows, final one, come on. My soul knows that I have the determination to follow through with this. From this state 
Can you keep your promise? Yeah, I can keep my promise. Will you? Absolutely. Is this an absolute pledge to these boys? And most importantly, to your own heart. And how about to show your wife that you're whole again? I want help. I'm reaching out, you know, I'm grabbing hands. This is my chance to take control of this family, and I just need to be a dad. The most important thing is you get in that state, that nothing's stopping me state, nothing will. So I got some tasks for you. It's fine. OK? Your first task is tonight. It is scary as hell. It'll sound insane. And I'm going to make it even more scary by taking your boys on this task as well. And you're not even going to know what it is until it's right about to happen. And the only thing I will tell you, if you don't do it, we're done. And I'm not doing that to be threatened or be mean or something like that. It's just you got to help the willing. Are you up for that? Deal. All right, man. I wanted John to face his fear, because that's where all the power is, the muscles and facing the fear. Come on out, guys. I've got to test his will by putting him in an incredibly challenging physical environment. And let's see what he's really up for, what he's really committed to. You came out in the middle of the night, now I know what's going on. I know it's scary as hell, so let me tell you what it is. Okay. We're going to walk about 50 feet from where we are, where there's a bridge over the ocean. It's about 35 feet high. You're going to hold hands, and you're going to take your boy, and you're going to leap into the absolute unknown. And once you take the leap, the rest of it's just fun. It's just those first moments, like the hardest part of working out, get into the gym. <laughs> and you, you're not doing it. So you can come out with me to the bridge to see it. I need to change the relationship between John Sr. and John Jr. This is something they should do on their own. This is your gear. Put it on. It'll be tight. That's what it's supposed to be. Go rock and roll. I need to do something that would cause him to be afraid. That'll get his full attention. Because all we care about is that he faces his fear. Is he willing to take the step? It's all perception. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's on. Hey, holding up, champ. He's scared. For John Jr. to see his dad, who would never take a risk, take a big risk, I think it means hope. I'm going to say one, two, three, your whole man. You just jump, no hesitancy. All right, come on with me. You get on this side and grab my hand, and we're going to take a walk down here. This is a leap of faith, baby. It's very dark. I was scared, I was nervous, but my son was right next to me, and I was the father, and I couldn't show that fear. I have no idea where I'm going. I can't see nothing. That's okay, take your time. Okay, right here, stop. John Jr., I want you to line up right next to that. John, remember, no stopping, no hesitancy. You're in charge. Mm -hmm. It's one, two, three, go. You start thinking, well, I'm going to hit that tree, I'm going to hit that rock. Well, wait a second. We, can, can we, you know, prolong the agony? But then I just said, I'm going. That's it. I'm going. Let's do this. One, two, three. <laughs> as soon as we hit the water, I bounced right up. I had my son's hand. I said, don't worry, John. I, I got you. You know, I got you. Daddy. All I know is it was a great feeling, and it was like a rebirth. That's my boy. It was kind of spiritual feeling to be in the water with my son like that. In a matter of seconds, we switched roles. You know, it was like, you're the, you're the child, I'm the dad. I felt something that child. I really did. I had to take charge to be the daddy again. It felt good. Last night, John Sr. faced his fears and took that leap of faith. So parts of John have stepped up. There's other parts of John that are still immature. Here's a man who had this huge injustice happen, his wife being randomly shot and killed. But you also have a man who did not do what was necessary for his family. Our job is to show him what's really possible so that those parts that are stronger have the chance to show up more if John decides he's going to serve something more than just himself. How are you liking these digs? Good. Pretty nice? Yes, very nice. <laughs> so I came by because when we started this, you were talking about how you were missing that drive, that motivation, right? So the next step in this journey, if you're going to take it on, I'm going to be putting you in the hands of some people where you have no option to feel pain and stop. 
If you commit to this, you're going to sign a declaration and agreement where you won't be able to get out. So the place that I'm going to send you to for 10 days is a place called Camp Pendleton. I'm going to put you in the care of the US Marines. They're not going to listen to you say what you can't do. You're going to have to push yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tough. Then it's going to be physical pain and exhaustion. But if John steps in and lives this, he'll still have plenty of you know demons to deal with. But he'll have a, a momentum and a foundation that will make him proud of himself. And also, frankly, I think the boys will be blown away. When you sign this, the US government owns you for 10 days. But you don't have to do this. You can say, I'm not going to do it. And this, this process ends. When does he leave? immediately upon returning home. You up for that, my friend? I think it's crazy. It's, you know, it doesn't make sense. I'm 50 years old. Am I able to, to even do this, you know, physically, mentally? You guys behind me? Can we do this? We should go. Let's do it. This is tough, but I need to do it. I'm thinking to myself, what the hell did I just do? Sergeant Major Joel Vines, you were sent to the Marines because of our reputation of courage and commitment. We will not lower our standards. Our combat instructors will give every effort and total focus to train you, and we will accept nothing less from you. Do you understand? Yes, sir. John's in the care, the gentle care <laughs> of the US Marines. We are here to shave your head, strip your idea, scrape you down and start you from fresh. The whole point of this is the Marines are going to push him beyond what he thinks his limits are. You're going to pick up that pack and you're going to put it on your back. And my guess is he'll have some ups and downs. We're going to get you out of your comfort zone right away. And that's just part of how you grow. And then if you're really committed, you stay on that path. And then you end up having a new life. Let's go. Come on. Easy days are done. And John's not there yet, but he's on the road. And that's our job here. Put him on the road. If you look at John's pattern, he's going to look for ways out, going to say that he's got some kind of physical pain. The Marines are going to do whatever it takes, and John's going to have to learn how to do whatever it takes. Hey, hey, Thanks, man. Yeah. Here we go, John. Do it. Love Love it. Let's go. You pick up that pace, you'll be keeping that pace. You got to get motivated. This is going to be the most miserable 10 days of your life. You're slowing down right now. That's not what I want, you understand? Yes, that's Sergeant. OK, listen, we're walking up this hill for a reason. You want to get a little bit in shape? I have no idea why I'm here, Staff Sergeant. Well, how about your kids? You want to be around for them, right? <sighs> you want to be around to see them get better? Yes, Staff Sergeant. Well, you ain't going to make it right now. I'm telling you right now. You need to burn that off, burn that fat off your body. You need to put out right now. Do you understand me? Yes, Sergeant? Staff Sergeant. Why are you walking like that? Your feet hurt? My right foot is swimming in this boot. It's hitting the back of my heel. You know nobody feels sorry for you, right? It's fine, Staff Sergeant. You're, you're right, it's fine. Had a blister. Eventually, it was like the size of a 50 cent piece, and every movement in my shoes and my boots, I felt. It ain't gonna be easy, John. Keep it pushing, let's go. That blister got to the point where it was like, that's it. I'm going home, I'm gonna lay down, that's it, I'm done. You're not gonna quit on us, let's go. Come on, we're not quit. That is not an option. Let's go. Relax. Deep breaths in through your nose. All right, let's go. Get down, get down. What do you think about this right now? Uh, I don't like it. Somebody tells you when to wake up, when to eat. As a matter of fact, grab that apple, stick it up into your face. I think anybody would have been angry to be thrown in a situation like that. I honestly didn't know how severe this was going to be. I don't know what you were briefed on or whatever the case is, but you can put out max effort and suck it up. This isn't what basically I was told was going to happen. I didn't promise you anything. We're going to train, we're going to work, and we're going to make you better. And that's just the way it is. Let's go, last hill. You know you got to get that 45 out the corners? It has to be perfect? Has to be. John's been through so much that people expect so little from John that John also expects so little from himself. He's lowered the bar. We need to raise the bar. So he needed to see some people that had it much tougher than he had it. 
And one of the most important meetings that I organized was with Staff Sergeant Chandler. It's good to see you. Good afternoon. And I'll let you finish. Thank you. I thought maybe we could go down and run a little bit and get to know each other a little bit better. Sure. OK. I'm just going to throw my leg on. Were you injured in the um, military? Yes, sir. I got hurt in Afghanistan in 2001. I stepped on a landmine there. And how long after did you retire from the United States Marine Corps? Last year, I stayed in. Um, I ended up going back to Iraq three more times. Ready whenever you are. Staff Sergeant Chandler is a man who got well as fast as he could so he could go back for three more tours of Iraq after losing his leg. I mean, he's a perfect role model for contrast to the standards John has had at least in the past for himself. So why don't you tell me a little bit about you? I'm a single dad, 50 years old. Uh, my wife was killed about three years ago. That's tough. Yeah, it is tough. And what you went through is tough. But I think you can what if everything forever. Uh -huh. And you can what if everything so much that you end up standing still. There's no way to live. No. You can walk whenever you want to. OK. <laughs> yeah, I've had some obstacles in my life, but nothing like yours. Well, thank you for that. But you can't compare one person suffering to another, because everybody's own thing is their own thing. Seeing you and what I've been going through here for the last week has been, uh, it's opened my eyes to things, you know. Uh, kind of sat down for the last year and let the world go by. And, uh, you know, I have no excuse. Uh, looking at you, I mean, you could have cashed them in, you know, said, hey, I'm done. You know, and, and coming to see me taking this time, it's, it's uh, it's, you know, I feel it. Thank you for that. I heard that she had two kids. I yes. have a daughter. I got to be the best version of myself for her, as I know you got to be the best version of yourself for them. This man's given his leg for me and my children to live free. How could I say, oh, you know, my legs are swollen or this? I've got legs. This showed me that anything is possible. There's no excuse for anything. I can't give an excuse. I need to go on. Let's go! Good work, good work, good work. Attack that time! There we go! Attack Three that time! Three strikes! Stop! 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 There we go! Let's go! Good work, good work, good work. This time, right, right. I surrendered to the Marines that, okay, let's do this. I'm giving you all of it. And that's one. I know I changed as a person. Let's just smoke coming down. Walking all the time, all the time. Keep Come moving, let's go, John, yeah, let's go. How's that foot feeling, John? Fine, Staff Sergeant. That's what I'm talking about right there. Keep that head up and keep walking. Hey, second, you think you can get up the hill? Yes, Staff Sergeant! They're behind you right now. Having them behind me, having them motivate me just gave me extra strength. I gelled with them at that point. I reached a point of brotherhood. I had to show to these young Marines that, hey, I'm here to do the best I can. Keep, me. Keep moving. Keep moving. Great job. That's it. Right here. You're done. You did that for yourself. Be proud. These Marines took me to a point where I never thought I would ever, ever, ever be. It's an honor to call them friends. Staff Sergeant Hurd, great to meet you. You too. Good Thank morning. you so much for all you've done here. John, how do you feel? Two weeks ago, pack and a half, cigarettes. Uh, now I'm doing physical things with the United States Marines. It's a, it's a, it's a good feeling. you got to be damn proud. I am. I looked in John's eyes, and after 10 days in the Marines, he looks like a different guy, a different posture, different stature, everything. So John, this is your next step. That's it right there. That's Old Smokey. And they say it's the toughest climb you could possibly imagine. There's two trails up there. And there's little tiers and big tiers. And we're taking up big tiers. Old Smokey kicks the butt of any Marine that goes up that mountain. The idea he's going to do this after 10 days or so just seems impossible. How are you going to get yourself up there? Positive attitude. Any breakthrough you're going to have in your life starts where something that's impossible starts to be impossible. I don't know if John will make it to the top of this mountain. Many Marines don't. But I want to make sure that he gives everything. That's the real test. At the top of that mountain is going to be waiting for you, your boys and a couple of your family members to cheer you on for those final steps, man. All right? Yes, sir. Tony told me that my children were at the top of that hill. I wanted to see my kids bad. I just had to do this.
This is it right here. It's time for us to get up there. If you're gonna make it, you're gonna go, Staff Sergeant. Get mentally conditioned right now. Picture yourself going up it. It's gonna suck. You're right, and then you're done. Think how proud your kid's gonna be when you get up there. I knew it. My children were at the top of that hill. My goal was to be there, and there was nothing gonna stop me. Good work, John. Way to put. Thanks, Dad. Way to put. It was tough. Every two steps, you'd go back one. But I just knew I had to continue on. What part of your life hasn't been an upheld challenge? What part? Tell me that. All of it stops on You're facing the adversity. Let's go. Put out. He knows you boys are up here. He knows you're at the top. He doesn't know about the rest of the family. Waiting for John. I'm talking to his boys. His sister Yolanda was there, and his auntie was there. And his auntie was the one who took John in during the tough times, and Yolanda had been there for him as a family member no matter what. Yeah. What do you think about this? I know you've seen John go through some ups and downs in life. This is the best thing that's ever happened to all of them. The only easy day was yesterday. Let's go. Get me to the top. They're looking at you right now, John. They're looking down on you right now. Check it out. That's Check it out. Coming up here. Almost there. You're not gonna quit on us. Let's go. Come on. Can you see him? He's looking at us. Do not quit on yourself. Let's go. Take the hill. <laughs> there we go. Now you can see it. Yeah. He's waving. Now he started walking again. He started again. walking like crazy. Look at him. It really made me and my little brother proud to see my dad doing that. I never thought he was gonna make it up here. He climbed up with young 18, 20 year old Marines. I knew my dad had it in him because he's my dad. <laughs> Look up, you see him? Coming around the corner, here he comes. Come on. Wow! He's in bed in See the pride in my children's eyes. It was well worth all the pain that I went through. <laughs> Good job, Daddy. Thanks, hey, son. I just want to say thank you to my friends, the United States Marines. They pushed me to places I didn't think was possible. <laughs> I realized that in order to make this transformation in such a short period of time, that uh, it needed to be done by the best, and uh, the Marines were the best. Take care of your dad. Make sure he keeps up. No, Daddy's taking care of them now. <laughs> That's the right answer. Daddy's taking care of them. I can move heaven and earth for my children. They believe that. I could fix anything. It was a real good feeling to be Daddy again. What does this mean to you, John? I can achieve mountains. I can, I can do it. I can do it. What John learned is if it, over 300 pounds, I could push myself up the top of that mountain, if I could do anything I set my mind to, and that was our goal. There's always gonna be a place he can come back to and say, damn, I've done this. Because now you've proven yourself, man. You've stepped up for your boys, you've stepped up for yourself. So the next step is, okay, we've handled the challenges. Now let's just go make the future that you deserve and your family deserve. Do you agree? Amen. So then the question is, what does that look like for you? What do you think that would be? If we were gonna have the same philosophy of aiming higher, where would you be aiming career-wise now? Probably going back to executive chef at a major facility. Your specialties with train was to be a French chef, is that right? Ah, uh, yes, yes. What if our next task with you was for you to go to work at one of the best French restaurants in LA, La Cachette? It is the best, it has the highest standards you could possibly imagine there. La Cachette, the food is unbelievable. Chef's name is Jean Francois Metinet. He's world famous. What he puts out of this kitchen is unbelievable. And this is what I live for. I don't know if you're aware, but he's expanding right now. He's about to have an opening. And in order to grow for that opening, he's going to need some people. And he's willing to give you a try, to give you a shot, because we told him everything you've done. You'd start at the bottom level. And that might be just it, and you get some great experience. Or if you can impress the hell out of him, you could become part of his team. John has an extraordinary opportunity here. When he gets in that kitchen and the chef starts demanding things from him, it may be like when he started out with the Marines. We're gonna find out whether he goes back to that old pattern of making excuses again. What do you say to that challenge? Yen? I'm for it. <laughs> That's right. awesome. And guess what? Work your tail off, show him what you can do, and I'll be there with you on opening night. Thank you. <laughs> this opportunity of a lifetime but uh, I don't want to make a fool out of myself. I'm entering a place that uh, maybe I don't belong.
Hey, John. How are you? Nice to meet you. Very, very nice to meet you. Yeah. An honor. How are you, Idiot? Sit down. We're going to talk a little. OK, obviously, we just met. You need to prove to me that you're going to be up to the test. It's going to be rough. Remember, John has been trained at the Colony Institute of America, so he has it in himself to deliver. You ready to go? I'm ready to go, Chef. All right. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. The question will be, will John really show up with hard work that the chef really demands in this kind of environment? Roberto? Yes, Chef? Uh, you're going to take John with you? Uh, I was scared. I have three days to prove myself. And I'm saying to myself, is this what I want? Is this real? Don't cut yourself. If you do well, we keep you a year. Thank you, Chef. If you don't do well, you give me a bus pass. Yeah. You need to show us then that you really want it bad. Yes, sir. Ah. You got a Band-Aid? You guys survived that one. Thank you. I was more like a prep cook, and I still couldn't even do what he expected of me because I, I lost more than I learned. You want most of the fat off? Yes. I didn't know what was going on. The timing of what we were doing, I didn't know how to get to that finished product. You okay, John? Yes, sir. Make sure there's no smoke on the side. Make sure it's not, yeah, too dark. Okay. Here I'm trying to compete in an environment that I, I don't belong right now. Yeah, you're going to have to do everything much smaller. Chef was looking over my shoulder to make sure I knew what I was doing. Whatever you do, John, with us, you need to have to learn uh, to be very thorough. No, we're not going to cut corners. It was nerve-wracking. I was not accepting this. I was not feeling this. I, you know, I don't want to be made the fool out of myself. Something you're going to have to learn little by little. It's pretty complex. John says he's up for the challenge, but so far he's going back to his old patterns. He's feeling sorry for himself and making excuses and forgetting what this means for his kids, what it means for himself. Nobody can do this for you. We all have to step up, and we're going to see if John really can. Even if you take it slow at the beginning, it's better than to make mistakes. Hey, Big John. Mr. Robbins, how are you? Good, good. Listen, I want to do a little check-in with you, and okay. I've heard some mixed things, and I just want to make sure that we're here to support okay. you. You know what an opening's like. Everything's on the line. All the celebrities are there. Nothing can get screwed up, since tonight really matters the most. OK. So come on in. Sure. Now is the moment of truth. Tonight is critical, so I asked Staff Sergeant Earhart to join me and his sister Yolanda. I don't want John to feel cornered, but I need John to look at this and hold himself to a higher standard. I also need to dig underneath and see what's this about. Tell us what your experience has been like. Um, it's been tough these last couple of days to get back into the swing of things. Are you enjoying it? Honestly, for me, I'm following recipe. There's no creativity. You don't have an income stream. You can't stay at the Salvation Army more than a few more weeks. Mm -hmm. So beggars can't be choosers. You mm -hmm. know, you've got an opportunity that most people would die for. You need to perform at a level that they'd want to hire you so your kids can be supported. John has got different parts of him that are kind of fighting for dominance. The guy that will sacrifice for his family or the guy that wants comfort. There's like a little, you know, battle going on in there. My biggest thing is this. We started our little journey together. You didn't want to do it at first, but you realized that that was your stepping stone. You are a different man. Oh, I understand. Without that. question. And I'm very proud of that. But that was yesterday. Today, I want you to posture up a little bit. It's the best thing you got. I appreciate this offer, but for my career, it's not where I want to be. Right now, John is about John. Part of me wants to just kick him in the butt and go, hey, you don't have another job, and you think you're just going to get one? It doesn't work that way. But I can't give somebody hunger. You know, I can't give them drive. Didn't you hear what the sergeant was saying, John? To see you climb that mountain and to see your kids waiting there for you on the other side, you are their hero. Your kids believe not only in you, but they know that they're going to be able to survive because of you. Life is gonna hit you sometimes in really unjust and unfair ways. You've had a lot of pain, but out of that pain needs to come something really great. Deliver right now with your soul and show your boys, I'm here to serve something bigger than myself. We're gonna kick butt, we're gonna make it happen. I'm gonna make these guys wanna hire me. Show your boys what's possible if you put your guts into something. I don't wanna send you back to the Marines for 30 days, so let's find your passion in this and then go make your dream happen. You got a deal? deal. Honestly, I have to just accept what they're telling me. Being a father and not being able to provide for your children, 
it hurts. Let's do it. But I need to prove to them that once you make a commitment, you have to follow through, and that's what I needed to do. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. John needed a little love and a little butt kicking today, and he got those, and now we got to see how's he going to show up. What's your experience in oyster shocking? Uh, none whatsoever, Chef. None, OK. You need to uh, twist it up, OK? Yes, Chef. John looks a little scared, but we want to see the fire in him, and we need to bring back the excitement from 20 years ago. We have to see it tonight. This one's a little tough. Pretty good at it. I never thought I could do this. <laughs> I must have shoved 100, and I was kind of proud of myself that I was able to do this. All right, John, go inside, fried chicken. This one's ready. On the size, it's this one. Yeah, here you go. OK, great. One more. Yes, Chef. You make the chicken, you make the burger, everything. It felt good because I gave it my all, and I really, honestly enjoyed myself. <laughs> Seeing my sons come in, it got me emotionally because they know this is what daddy lives for. What'd you make today? Fried chicken, strips, tuna. Huh? Good stuff, huh? Proud of you, Dad. Good. To see my dad working, it really made me and my little brother proud. Good luck, Daddy. But after I saw my children, that's when I knew this is where I need to be. It was the greatest feeling. It's priceless. All right, welcome to the opening of a Cachette Bistro. You know, the only thing I'm asking you is to be very professional and do your job. Well, guys, good luck. How you doing, brother? Good, good. Pretty exciting. It's unbelievable. Well, I'm really proud of you, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy. When I walked in, I saw John up there. I said, you happy? He said, yeah, I'm happy. He was just like, OK, he's got it. You know, he's really got it. All right. There we are. Thank you. So tell me, how's John doing? Is he showing up at a different level? Yes. He looks like, actually, he's enjoying it. Good, good. So he's showing up with heart. Absolutely. So, what do you think about the possibility of him becoming a member of your team? He's listening. Yes. He's learning. Yes. We'll see. John showed up for the chef and for the team at La Cachette. And he took the spirit of what the Marines are about and just put it into action. But now the moment of truth is here. So I arranged with John to meet me at the Wadsworth Theater. And in front of everyone, I wanted John to declare whatever he's going to declare. And when push comes to shove at the end, will he say, yes, I'll step up? here tonight to celebrate the life of a very special man. His name is John Rodriguez. And also to celebrate his young boys, John Jr. and Anthony. John's story of his breakthroughs is really how the caring for your sons, caring for something even more than yourself, can pull you out of the deepest challenges. And I'm just proud to bring out John Rodriguez and his two sons, John Jr. and Anthony. I see the Marines sitting there, front row. I see my sister, my aunt, trying to hold it together. But it is an emotional thing to see these people out there cheering us on, standing ovation, and knowing that we're winners. We were down for a minute, but we're back. What's the future look like for your family now? Happy. Happy. That's the one we wanted in the very beginning. <laughs> John? It's. Once they open that door, I can, I, I can do whatever I want to do. I can accomplish whatever I want to accomplish. Uh, there's no stopping us. And John. Yes, sir. There's one thing we've not mentioned in this journey, and that's your wife, Tanya. We hadn't really talked much about Tanya, except in the very beginning. And I wanted to make sure that they felt her spirit at the moment of their victory. 
how would she feel right now seeing you whole and strong? Uh, I think she used you as a tool. I mean, she, she set this up. I needed this help to get back into life. Um, part of me died that day. Um, my best friend, my lover, my soulmate, you know, that was, she was everything. And um, this has made me a stronger man and given me my pride back and given me a chance to show my kids that their daddy still got it. You know, their daddy's ready. John proved he'd do anything for his kids. And in that, John became the father he's committed to being, but more importantly, John also became the man that he deserves to be and is inside. John. I have one final surprise for you. Chef jean Francois, you're out here somewhere? Come on up here. If you, here he is. Give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Don't make me cry. What do you think about the whole experience? I'm honored to share in your, your, your love for, and your restaurant. You know, it was, it was unbelievable. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, it, it went very well. I'm very happy that you, you, know, you love what you do, and obviously you love, love cooking. And, uh, Is this man worthy to join your team? Um, we're going to take you with us. <laughs> if somebody told me 30 days ago that I wouldn't be smoking, my family and I would have went to Fiji. I would have got to the top of Old Smokey with the help of some Marines, and I got a job under Jean-Francois Metzene. I would tell him it's not gonna happen. There's no way. Chef Rodriguez, ladies and gentlemen! Tony Robbins, he saved my life and gave me another opportunity in life. Thank you for what you did from the bottom of my heart. Thank you.